and transition and then put that on so i don't forget and a three and a two and a one It's December 27th, December 27th, Jesus Christ, it's July 27th, 2019, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right, I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea, I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast with Vintage Terminal Length, episode number uh, 518. And uh, if you haven't heard the pre-show, you need to become a patron. <laughs> Quality <laughs> entertainment. That's all I got to say. Quality entertainment. <clears throat> Choke on me, daddy. What are we talking about today? <laughs> Shit. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. The, the cue is there. I'm sorry. It just came out. If you want to understand the joke, you got to listen to the pre-show. Hashtag most broken Damon episode ever. <laughs> so that's what I think is going to happen. That was before the show. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> Gary. So, um, last night I watched The Return of Mary Poppins. Okay. Just bear with uh huh. And I was thinking about like, did we need to make this? Was it necessary? Was it entertaining? You know those kind of things. I have, yes. Mm. Well, because you know, so, and it kind of got me thinking about how sometimes we return to certain things over and over again because we think it's like what we want, okay. but it may not necessarily be what we need. Okay. And fantasies tend to be about what we want, not necessarily what we need. Okay. Um, so adjunct to that, mm -hmm. in the past day, I watched a lengthy video on a certain platform that happens to put adult entertainment out. <laughs> <laughs> mostly known for that. Bad. That narrows it down. <laughs> yeah, that mostly... Uh, has amateur postings. And, um... Now, was this a streaming it, service, or is this a, a actual, like, video service? Uh, I don't know what you mean by actual video Like, service. live streams versus, like, a... Like, the difference between Twitch and YouTube. Uh... I mean, to be fair, all right, we're streaming on YouTube, but, you, you yeah. know... You know what I mean. It was a it was a tube, not of the U variety, but a different letter of the alphabet. Okay. <laughs> it was the tube of X. It was tube of X. if we so, haven't figured it out by now, it was the tube of X. Go I mean, it, it could have been a plethora of, of places. You could go to PornMD and do one search, and you can <laughs> and it will search all of them. So we're just trying to be specific, narrow it down. Anyways. Moving on. I just want to give a shout out to the live chat right now because this is some of the funniest stuff I've read in a while. Um, <laughs> it's like a it's like a clue game. <laughs> Except we lost because he used the word tube, which is iPad. probably one of the words words that you're not supposed to use. Anyways, go on, okay. moving on. So Move I ended up watching this like uh lengthy video. Uh, to be fair, I did not watch the whole thing because like even production quality stuff i fast forwarded um <laughs> i'm sorry it's, like, it's quite frequently what you do in these videos to be fair well here's all right so here's not the all of them it, but you know quite frequently well to be fair like let's talk about this as a brief moment we'll get to the topic everybody just hold yeah. on okay so <laughs> how often do you go to that website and see a 45 minute video loaded uh 
right? Yeah, fine. Well, I don't honestly. I don't really go to that website very often anymore. That's nice, dear. Um, <laughs> not often. To be to, also to be fair, on the other site that I use, uh, I usually set the filter. I kind of want to put it at five minutes minimum, uh, but uh, the minimum they have beyond or from zero is ten, so they don't have the five. Otherwise, I would put it at five. Right. Although when I use PornMD, then I can adjust it to five, and it works. Right. Looking at PornMD. MD, as in <laughs> medical doctor. I I got it. That's what I said. Mm-hmm. Anyway, right. moving right along. Look, it's just like Google for porn. Moving right along. So my point was, what the hell? Sorry, I'm trying to multitask here, everybody. So my point is, is that I was surprised. I was I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, oh, somebody posted a video recently, and it's 45 minutes. It's quite a bit of time to you know dedicate to something and to post Mm -hmm. so but it but the the title caught me so i was like okay this is something i might want to you know watch so uh give me just a second copy paste (laughs) put it in the chat over there oh my there you go all right so I can't click that that link, you know. 45. <laughs> well, David can. 45 minutes <laughs> and 7 seconds technically is the link. So, point being, I watched this and I was like, this is entertaining and uh, satisfactory. And then <laughs> afterwards it got me thinking about it because the whole video is – the description reads that it's for – it's sort of someone's fantasy. And so I started wondering, like, about fantasies that people have, if they've ever tried to make them come true, and if it's a satisfactory, or if fantasies are really meant to be that way. You know, kind of like um, the person that you've always had a crush on, but you've never hooked up with. Like, is it best Mm -hmm. to leave it that way versus actually, you know, hook it up? So could you say that fantasies could be kind of on a spectrum? There's the minor fantasies to the ones that you're very serious on trying to live out and have more of a possibility. Like Um, my eighth grade social or my ninth grade social studies teacher is fantasy. Why ninth grade? Probably. Because I was in ninth grade and I had a social studies teacher. Okay, so is the fantasy about being in ninth grade, is the fantasy about a teacher, or is it the fantasy about that specific teacher? That specific teacher. Okay. And the reason why I ask those questions is because I think people have fantasies, but some are you're not able to achieve. Like, you cannot go back in time to the moment in which you were in ninth grade to hook up with your ninth grade science teacher. I mean, if I just hooked up with my ninth grade social studies teacher, but being the age of, of 38 going on 39, that will be perfectly fine. I don't have okay. to be in ninth grade and 14 at the same time. Well, that would be awkward and rapey, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean... I mean I would be totally well, consented to that, even though my age would have been legal. Mm-hmm. I, I was yeah, not at legal mm-hmm. age of consent. You were Although not at legal age I of think consent. in some, I, and there is a possibility that somewhere in in this world there is one. But there we go. A, a dream fantasy versus realistic fantasy. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All, all, all the de- all the, the demonstration, all, all the example fantasies for each of those. Oh, what up? It's a little revealing. Not sure I want to say that out loud, but um, that, that's... <laughs> that's a little. Mm-mm. Anyway, well, Lloyd yeah. is loving this show. 
Woo, Mary Poppins to age of consent. So <laughs> just running to get right back. And wait, forth. there's one more logical conclusion, and it has to do with Marvel. Duh. Um, although I can't say it because I don't think I know the right line. I mean, anyway. it's like a time stone, a reality stone. You can use one of those to kind of make no, it happen. No, no, Guardians of the Galaxy. Did you see volume two? Yes. Hold on. Is this name Wait, Windu? What? Huh? Is this name Windu? Um, no. Uh, you mean wrong. Ego? No. no. The, 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 uh, the, 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 what's his name's character? Is it? Yeah. Are, are you dealing with the guy who whistles and throws around an arrow, or the yeah. guy who's a, basically a god? Arrow. Arrow. Okay. Yeah, that's Windu. Right. And he has a line in the movie. Anyways. Yeah. Horrible segue. <clears throat> uh, I, I don't remember the specific line. It's been a while. He yeah. said, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> I think he says, I'm Mary fucking Poppins, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, now to try to get back into favorite fantasies after discussing that. Um, <laughs> so, it, no, but it, I mean, it kind of got me thinking about, like, you know, we have these... We have these imaginations, you know, as, as humans that we think, you know, this is what we want. This is what we desire. And of course, because it's a fantasy in our head, it plays out perfectly. Mm -hmm. And there's no issues with that. Where reality is another story. True. Um, so I didn't know, like, because we've not really discussed this, I'm pretty sure, in all the years of, of the show, what our fantasies are as hosts. It's possible we have. I'd have to look it up. But, um, well, I will say this: I don't think I know what Jeff or David's fantasies are. Like, I could make generalizations. I think I know enough about your tastes in men, or your interests, your proclivities, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, fancies. <laughs> but your fancies. But I could also be way off base. Like, I don't know if Jeff would find it titillating. You know, to have someone. Um, you know, make dinner and feed him tortilla soup, you know, before, <laughs> you know, you mean taco soup. Yes. I've talked about taco soup a lot, but not tortilla soup. It's a different type of soup. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but like, but see, I'm already getting it wrong. Like, I'm making things that don't even exist put together. So, no, no, just, no, tortilla soup exists. It's just not the one that I would prefer. I know. And, I mean, I know. It, the only problem is that taco soup has corn in it, and you know how that goes. Who said you were going to bottom? Anyways. Uh, <laughs> wow. I mean, he's got a point. <laughs> wow. Anyway. So just so everyone is aware, we did a Would You Rather fantasy edition on, on April 24th, 2016, which was COL 362. Oh, so that was over three years ago. But that was kind of like, it looks like it was, we were probably picking things. I'm going to go look yeah, at that. Yeah, we were picking specific Keep going. things. It was, it was a this or that sort of thing. So, Right. Um. Yeah, I was going to say, because, God, we haven't done a Would You Rather. Oh, uh, yeah, and it didn't really go to, it didn't fully go to sexual route, just right. so you're aware. So, uh, and then the other thing I'm kind of interested in discussing is whether or not there are classic tropes, meaning, like, typical fantasies, like, mm -hmm. common fantasies, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I will say that when I was in high school and then in college, well, even in post-college, I've had a fantasy about hooking up in a locker room. Mm -hmm. Specifically, more often than not, one of two locker rooms in my past experience, one of them being the high school locker room in the senior okay. time. Okay. Um, the other one is physically a place, however, timeline-wise in my history is out of place, which was the uh, shower area of the elementary school gym. Of the, uh, the Okay. 
like that locker and shower area was smaller and like but still you know how like your imagination just kind of takes parts and pieces and mashes stuff together Mm -hmm. so to be clear this is not about me being you know in fourth grade this is about the physical location not about the age time thing Mm -hmm. but i have a feeling like that might be just a trope like that might be a commonality amongst individuals (laughs) potentially um I just I know I probably have mentioned this once or twice on this show. Um, one of my biggest fantasies that's not as easy for me is the whole trucker fantasy, like meeting a guy in the re- in the at the rest stop, you know, bathroom, going to their truck and doing all kinds of wonderful, awesome, naughty things, and then getting out of the truck and them going on their way and. Me with a smile on my face, like that. Do you want to walk a shame? No, not walk a shame. It wouldn't be shameful at all, dear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> would have no shame for what just said. Walk of pride, my apologies. <laughs> yeah, like that would be my thing. That would be the thing. Like one of the things, and um, yeah, like that's like one of my like general ones that I know in my mind. I keep going back to when someone asks, ever asks you, like, what is your fantasy? What is something you fantasize about? That would be the one thing. And it's usually difficult for me to ever have happen because, one, I have to be at the rest stop. And I'm usually not able to get to said rest stop because, you know, this this puppy doesn't drive. So I kind of have to get there somehow. And and usually when I am at said rest stops, I'm usually not alone. And it would be weird for me to disappear for half an hour, hour, depending on you know how the business gets done <laughs> so <laughs> drew says it's fun damon so i've heard <laughs> <laughs> right drew i think you have plenty of things that you, that you have done in your reality that are quite fantastical mm, 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 mm. I think my bed's a little more appropriate on that one, but anyway. Uh, I, I don't have a fan, so. It's okay. <laughs> Damon, but, um, Damon has enough for all of us. I have plenty, I have plenty for everyone. <laughs> you get a fan, you get a fan, you get a fan. But um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's one of the big ones for me that is all, like, if I were, like, that comes back to mind. Um, and the one that's more, I think, realistic is one that Chris was kind of talking about, you know, the the um, the massive orgy kind of thing. Um, I have been in um, I have been in group play sessions, um, sexual group play sessions, you know, a hotel room with people and everyone doing kind of doing their own thing, but the whole like big bed um, massive orgy where things are kind of happening that you see like in porn all the time. That's I think that would fall to me like a trope, but it is something I think is potentially could happen, like kind of maybe mm-hmm. arrangements you know? could be made. Yeah, but fucking uh, fucking orgy like arrangement is, is hard as hell. Like just getting like two people to do stuff, but then you add like layers of like several people. Mm, man, sounds I mean, like something I have said several times. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, a yes, dear you can go to- friend of mine once said that a bear run was nothing more than a catered orgy. To which I disputed and said a catered orgy would be way easier to plan. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, true. So, <laughs> mm. yeah, yes, between a bear run and a yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, uh, I mean, I think that, but uh, I kind of wonder if we think that some of these fantasies are typical or um, common because of like the medium that we've taken in in porn. Like, because I didn't know anything about like tea rooms and, hooking up in pickle parks and like truckers and all that kind of stuff. I didn't know about any of that until I became exposed to like adult media, mostly back in the day, like print through like magazine and, um, 
you know, uh, slight fa- flashback to previous episode where we talked about what has porn taught us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I will say this much. Um, I kind of agree with you, Gary. I think some things have kind of like have come to mind based on just things you've seen or done. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly seen, like mostly like I would say porn. Like porn has been a big like I would say porn has been a big part of your fantasy. You know, um, for me, uh, uh, being kind of kink related, you see a lot of like in contests. You see a lot of like fantasy scenes and what have you. Um, so I've gotten that experience as well. So I know there's different kind of fantasy moments. Um, right. There's some, the moment is the, the fantasy is the transformation going from a regular Joe, you know, businessman to becoming a um, leathered up kinky sub, you know, that that's something that kind of is a thing. It's a fantasy scene. It, it gets done um, often. Um, sometimes to death, unfortunately. But, you know, it's the thing where, like, they meet someone, they meet a sir or a master, and that master kind of takes control of them and changes them into what they want, right? what they secretly want to be. Well, I mean, like, I was just thinking, like, this is the first thought for me, so this has not come before, but this might have been somebody else's fantasy. I was just thinking about how what I haven't seen in film is like a small group scene in an elevator at a bear event. Mm-hmm. Understandably, the elevator would probably have to get stuck. Um, and maybe that really has happened. I don't know. I Normally, mean, when an had... elevator gets stuck at a bear event, it's because it's full of too many people. Um, <laughs> so, you know. Q and AB. Uh... <laughs> Fill in the blank. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I see I have so like one of my like, you know, common I think would be more real. Well, not realistic, I think, but kind of realistic fantasies for me has often been the playing at work um, fantasy, you know, someone that you work with a co maybe not necessarily a co-worker, but someone who works in the same building as you and you are able to find like a spot to like get together it could potentially happen it has more potential to happen um there's the the potential danger of getting caught and that kind of you know raises the stakes a little bit i will say i have a thing for thick chubby male nurses in hospitals (laughs) those scrubs man um yeah it's problematic because there's a part of me that's like, surely there's like a like janitorial mop closet uh-huh. right here somewhere, right? Like an empty room that's like you can lock for like, or like a private like one like uh, toilet, you know, handicap mm-hmm. accessible room that you could mm-hmm. take mm-hmm. offline for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, a male nurse str- trying to uh, help you out after an operation. Give you that sponge bath. Well, okay. Having been a person who's been through surgery and recovery, that is not the time I am. I mean, true. Anything. <laughs> Just to I'm be not fair. I was a little dose of reality. Like, let's get some reality in there too. Like, well, at the, in, well, the, I was in a I was in a hospital bed for four days and can only shower like two of those four days. And you know, yeah, like no. Um. <laughs> right. So so here's the thing, like. How much reality are we putting into our fantasies? Very little sometimes, I would think. Well, I mean, I think there's context. Like, I think there's environment. I think there's, like, time, place kind of stuff. But then there's probably other things that you're not thinking about. Like, okay, so let's play out this fantasy about the male nurse at the hospital with the scrubs. And you actually go into, like, the janitorial closet. Um, So are you going to be able to, like, get down with all the smell of all the chemicals all around you? And maybe there, you know, is some dank, dirty, you know, swamp water in a mop bucket. Like, <laughs> is it really going to be everything that you want? Because I think we, like, try to make fantasies into the perfect situation. Um, and there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. I just wanted to like, kind of give a little balance yeah. and be like, eh, may not always be quite what you're thinking. 
<laughs> the nurses are tired and need someone to take care of them. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Well, that's uh, somebody's, like, you know, glass half full vision, obviously. The massage fantasy. Yeah. And you know what? That's one of those ones where, like, the reality also could come into play. Because I don't know about you. Those, after a while, if you're laying on a on a massage table, like, that's not necessarily the most comfortable thing to be on. After a while. Like, now, while you're getting it done, like, certain things are fine. But, like... And then, like, imagine trying to do certain positions, and I will, so. I mean, okay. it's not like you're necessarily going to actually have, the like, the full-fledged sex on the on the table, but you start no, off with a massage, the eventually thing. moves to the bed, but you know. you can, and someone I follow online has posted videos of this recently. <clears throat> so it puts on an event out in California. Oh, um, that, yes, yeah. But mm-hmm. that was, that's, Yeah. Okay, sorry. Had to remember. Got it in my head. Okay. That, that's like, full out sex on a, on a massage table. Yeah. Like, I, because there are certain things, like, to me, like, after, like, if I'm, like, I'll just put it like this. If I'm fucking someone on a massage table, the, the part that's going to annoy me the most is the sound of that, like, table moving back and the forth squeaking. against, like, yes, against, like, the floor. But that, that, depending on how fast you're going um like like that sometimes can get annoying like i have really good ears sometimes i would i i'm busy thinking about the weight threshold issue with the table like that, that, also that, that too like what kind of a table are we talking about here like is this a top of the line you know like <laughs> can hold five six hundred pounds of weight you know because then i would feel okay but if it's like a travel table um Q, you got to write in. Like, send us a message, <laughs> something. Like, tell what us about the, what like is the weight limit mating <laughs> for said <laughs> professional. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I agree. But I, you know, we've seen I've seen fantasy. I've seen I've seen porns with that fantasy. That whole like massage. We you know one of our favorite guests was in a scene with said thing happening. Right. Where he was on a porn table, or a porn table. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> um, a, a, well, At that point, <laughs> it's pretty much it. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Not so you much know. sure about the reality of the massage that was happening at that moment. Well, I mean, that but did. that, but I will say this. So, like, that's one of my pet peeves. Since we're talking about that, like, that is one of my fantasies um, that I've actually made come true and would do again. So, <laughs> the the thing is, is that. Um, when it comes to that, though, my issue is, like, people post some of these videos, and what bugs me more than anything about the massage fantasy is, I'm like, you're not really massaging them. Like, this is super obvious that this is all about the day. Like, this yeah. this is not really about, to me, a reality scenario in which you are genuinely giving someone a massage, and then things pop up. Mm-hmm. Like, those I appreciate much more. There's a gentleman that I happen to follow on said to website channel. Uh, that I subscribe to that doesn't post very much, but he professionally, and I asked about that question mark at the end, because I'm not sure I've never seen in a video, there's been an actual financial transaction, but I get the feeling that this person does this as a career or as a side job. Mm -hmm. And from time to time has particular clients that want the happy ending. Mm hmm. And so every once in a while, he will end up posting a video. And I very much appreciate that because that is very realistic. Like, like mm-hmm. yes, the video yeah. may be a little longer because you are legitimately watching a massage. So mm-hmm. you're probably going to fast forward quite a bit. Um, <laughs> Skip to, to get, part. you know, to certain to things the, or to, to see get to the happens. naughty part. But I, w- I think... And that's the other thing, the flip of that, the reality sometimes of that is that we've now have this whole idea of this fantasy potentially becoming reality in our minds and legitimate like business owners, legitimate massage therapists and whoever right. now have to kind of balance that out. They have to like, like, no, I can't, I won't like I, this is meant to be a actual legitimate like thing. And well, as a licensed massage therapist said to me once, if you want me to rub you professionally, I can do that. If you want to have fun, I can do that. We just do not blend the two. 
Mm -hmm. Like one cannot be turned into the other. Right. Well, as what said to me, if we are the said person goes to bear events, if I am giving a massage at a bear event, that is fine. When they when the massage session is done, it is done. If you want to come back to my room later and mess up the sheets, brown chicken, brown cow. Right. It's just not the same thing. <laughs> and I respect that. I was like, it's, yeah. it's drawing, you know, boundaries. It's basically mm-hmm. stating like, I am, this is my professional time. I'm doing this thing. You want to have fun. I could be down with that. I've probably already seen you naked. Like, you know, we can go do that later. Podcast fantasy. Later. So Owen says, podcast fantasy. The guys suddenly have the power to travel through space time and invade each other's windows. Full on make out with shirts torn off. Okay. And apparently, uh, Philip likes the fact that uh, I'm wearing a my uh, uh, tank top today, and whenever I lift up my arms, pit porn. <laughs> and I think it's funny that Lloyd mentions that um, <laughs> squeaky bears are his fantasy, huh? And not okay. mine. But we've already had that discussion before. <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think that commonality is to be expected well, in some ways until you, um, probably have specifics that come into play. The more specific it is, the more unique it will probably be. So like, not that all locker room fantasies are the same or all male nurse fantasies are the same or, uh, all orgies necessarily are the same or all trucker fantasies are the same, but I think, you know, there's some, there's some commonality, mm-hmm. uh, between them. So Jeff, mm-hmm. you did not mention your fantasy. My ninth grade social studies teacher. I mean, besides that, we're, we're that that to me kind of, I'm I'm, mm. <laughs> that's a little fact story to me. Okay, so- I know it's not, but like, but like, like, because I have the same, I have a similar ish fantasy. Um, my U.S. history teacher when I was in high school um, was a super fucking hot daddy bear. Like, like the fur, the beard, the, yeah. Like, I mean, he's probably, I don't know, so much older now. But, like, that was, like, yeah, I have that, like, I took this class because I thought he was hot. That that kind of thing. Wow. wow. I mean, he was a good teacher, too. But, like, also. Oh, oh, like, oh, 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 oh. That's, like, further down the list of priorities. No. No, no. He also was it, a good teacher. He was a he, fine piece of ass. <laughs> that, 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 that. Oh, and he was a good teacher. I see how it is. Shut up. Sus. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. But no, the, the, I, yes, I have that, that fantasy as well. Like, I have plenty. Oh, God. Growing up a, what, slightly repressed Baptist Southern Baptist um, preacher's kid, tons of fantasies. Hmm. So Phillips, Phillips right, uh, got a good good note that he definitely can, can't do the teacher student role play thing for obvious reasons. Well, yeah. <laughs> so right. So here's the thing: is like people have fantasies about other people's occupations, but most likely that person does not have that same fantasy because they are already working said position. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe some people do, but the reality is, like, I used to make a joke when I used to work for a very large international uh, pizza making chain. Um, When I would finish my shift and change out of my work uniform and then go to the bar, instead of going all the way home and change, you know, changing clothes and showering and getting all gussied up, I was like, because it was late, I was like, no, I don't want to miss out on drinking time. So I'm going to go straight to the bar. And right. So I show up at the bar, though. And lo and behold, you know, it gets to be towards closing time. And some guys are like, you know, hey, you know, (laughs) and I would become annoyed because I would start to realize, like, you drunk and you hungry and I smell good to you. (laughs) (laughs) Because I smell smell like like, I smell like pizza. I, right, I smell like pizza, I smell like cheese sticks, I smell like marinara sauce, like I smell like what you want to put in your stomach. <laughs> and it's not fair. You want to no. eat you up for very different reasons. I get it, I get it, I get it. You want garlic and oregano and basil. Not in the mood right now. 
Gary, the midnight oh. snack, says Lloyd. Yeah. Oh, exactly, Drew. You show up at the bar. Hey, you smell like pizza, and you smell like a no. No, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> Uh, oh, and then, well, Philip brings up the classic, you know, uh, repair worker fantasy. Oh, that was boy, actually. Cable guy. Cable guy. Oh, God. Um, oh, well, okay. So Lloyd says tech support people. Philip says, like, he names a specific company, which I'm not going to name because they don't deserve <laughs> it. Uh, not that I have an issue with that. But, like, so to me, there's always the the at-home repair mm-hmm. person. Or delivery person. It's kind of the same fantasy. Mm-hmm. It is a stranger coming into your home for some reason. And so they're going to fix not the internet. Specifically for sex. Well, right. So they come in. They're going to fix the dishwasher. They're going to fix the AC unit. <clears throat> they're going to fix the internet. They're going to fix the cable. They're going to fix the electric, the plumbing, the something. And I will say this in the nicest way possible. Nine times out of ten. No. Right. Now, when you get <laughs> time out of 10, I will say this. Yeah, it's been a number of years. I can admit it now. When I first moved into this place, a male cable support representative person had come to the house, and I hadn't really decorated a whole lot yet. So there wasn't really a whole lot that would like give away, like, cocksucker. So, mm-hmm. But there was a part of me that I kept thinking, like, if you you just had like another 50 to 75 pounds on you. I would probably be like all about Uh right here. I'm here, but he was giving off too much of a, of a vibe of unawareness and focus on the job. So it was like just really kind of dispelling the whole fantasy thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, fantasy dispelled. Yeah. That is a thing too. So, I yeah. have I I have had two in the like life that I've lived by myself. Two like potentially like hot like guy service technicians of some kind. Um, the first one was a cable guy, and yeah, like it is. One of those things where it the situation would have it would have been so freaking awkward because it was at my little bitty apartment, and you know they had to crouch down and get in the area where like everything was, and it's just that was the whole like difficulty part of it. And then, but unfortunately, like ten minutes into it, they're like, "I have to do all this work outside." So, yeah, that didn't happen. And then recently, <laughs> actually, I think this year, yeah, this year the. Um, one of the AC service techs, because, you know, if you haven't realized it by now, my AC has been not so great. Um, one of the many um, service AC service guys was a was like hitting every single button, like. Like all of them, like, except he was he he almost all of them, like he, he wasn't, wasn't a daddy. he wasn't a daddy. There oh, I was just to say <laughs> older daddy beard gut booty. Yeah. yeah. But he wasn't older. He wasn't that older. He was kind of young, probably younger than me, actually. But don't matter. Had a bit of a had a bit of had a bit of a, like a country accent. Um, thick. He was beer. he was hitting enough buttons. He was hitting enough buttons, but he he like did he a was bad like job. he was hitting Zach Brown kind of buttons. Mm, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Anyway, but um. <laughs> He did a bad job because I was just because, you know, not a week or so later or two weeks later, my AC kind of kaput, went kaput for the first time. So shame on him. <laughs> but no, he did his job. I'm joking. He was he was the he was the AC person that was doing the preseason checkup for my unit before everything went to hell. So either he didn't do a good job or he did his job which was cleaning things and making sure everything works and it, you know, turned on and all that stuff, which is probably what they do with most pre-checks. Right. Failed to notice that the motor in the inside unit was like going to hell, but he wouldn't have known that. How could he have? Everything well, was it, I fine, mean, just working just fine. Well, and that's just it. Like, I mean, you, 
there isn't always necessarily a long lead into things going bad. I know. I'm. I'm. Just, so I mean, that's a whole other trust. <laughs> there's been sex where it's been good, 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 bad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like something just happens, and then you're like, oh, okay, and we gotta stop. Yeah, and I know. No. Um. He was, yeah. He was, oh, Drew brings up an interesting point. What about scouts? Were either of you into scouting? Did I scouts... was not. I, I I never got it. I I tried to, but. We did a um, little. I didn't. I didn't get a chance to. Um, it was too much, like financially for us. There was too time. outdoorsy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, too outdoorsy. It's kind of kind of the point. Uh, <laughs> I did uh, Cub Scouts, Weeblos, Boy Scouts. I did not finish Boy Scouts. Um, yeah, I, think I, I got was... to Weeblos. What did we call that? Second degree? Second degree, first degree. I can't remember what the order is. But I did part of it for mm-hmm. a couple of years. And then I got out. Because I think I've mentioned on the podcast before. I was very bothered. <laughs> and looking back all these years, I was creeped out by the fact that we had a scout leader or part of the leadership who wanted to sit down and talk to all the boys about how there are bad people out there that want to do things to young boys. And second year in a row, he had that speech with the troop. And I was like, all right, my... Looking back, I'm like, my spidey sense was tingling. Like, there was just something not right. So mm-hmm. I kind of, like, removed myself from that troop and everything. But um, <laughs> plus there was the whole homophobia thing in the troop in the scouts back then. But anyways. Um, so, yeah, there's there's that's a thing as well. Uh, camping. Outdoors. I have enjoyed that environment. Um not always what you think it is. I will say that there's something to be said to recognize that uh, there are things called insects. <laughs> um, so again, not outdoorsy. Yeah, yeah, outdoor stuff can is it sounds great in theory, but sometimes it just cannot work. Um, like late fall, maybe if it's not too cold. Where all the bugs are dead, like doing something outside <laughs> that could work. But like, you just need to have citronella candles, you know, running, in, and you're fine. I'm just gonna happen to be having a fantasy and just like, oh look, I have this citronella candle. Kind of click. I mean, like, the, only, like, the only time I've ever done anything with a sling was at at Back to the Woods years ago. So. I mean, I've played but i've played indoors at like at certain campground that has a space designated for said play to happen wait so you was consider it that indoors? Or wait, wait wait you consider that indoors because it's a structure yeah okay. it's enough of an indoors area where there's not you're not dealing with the potential outdoors situation yeah elements yeah, mm, yeah. kind of I haven't Typically. been there in a number of years. Last I knew, there was a very big opening in the building. So, I mean, yeah, there is still, but I think <laughs> I think even the even the bugs have been like, nope, fuck that shit, not gonna bother. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, to be fair, I don't know if they're still there. When I used to work there many years ago, uh, there was one or two bathtubs outside the building that would collect water. Some people would use them for water sports. Other things, yes. Right. Um, but one of our things was to go, like, if it had, if we'd had a rain or whatever, like, the owner was very conscious of the fact, like, we would go out and we would um, either drain them and or put bleach in the water. Oh. Because we wanted to keep the, you know, mosquito population down. So we were trying to not, like, have standing I water. I understand that, yeah. Like that. <laughs> That's interesting. So, um, kids... FYI, for your fantasy scenes, make sure that you don't do it near standing water outside, because that's where mosquitoes are bred and live. <laughs> Ding. Nice. The now, more you know. Lloyd, back to the woods is a uh, heart, uh, not heart, a Texas bear. Yeah, the heart of Texas bear event that takes place at a clothing optional campground here in Texas. So, yes, there are bear camps that take place in campgrounds. Uh, last weekend or is it this weekend is um, 
uh, shit, what the hell is it named? I think it's called The Woods mm. uh, in Pennsylvania, over on the east side of the state, um, mm-hmm. near the Philly, Jersey, New York kind of area. Uh, it's very popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, there was a, uh, my friend was at Camp Buckwood last weekend. They had a bear, um, like bear themed weekend. At camp, at camp, I think it was Camp Buckwood. Pretty sure it was Camp Buckwood. Yeah, and he's going back later um, for another event. Like, so, FYI, gay campgrounds do exist. Are you know, there are several, especially here. <laughs> so, yeah, nice, true. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I think there's fantasy there's fanny of... pack candy for all potential fa- fantasies: condoms, lube, citronella, bleach tablets for standing water. Right. <laughs> you forgot the off. Oh, uh, wait. Yeah. Or, well, I just mentioned. Don't forget up. the insect, the insecticide. <laughs> exactly. Nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, and that's. I think there's like. Lots of things. Well, like when I worked at the campground, like one of the things that people love to do, which I think some people might have fantasies about, is fucking on the trails. Mm. Um, that happened. Been there, done that. Frequently. Um, he didn't buy the t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's it just a say. terrible. Yeah. Yes, it does. Just, I will like, say. Why was I back to the woods? I, uh, they were, it was getting to nighttime and I was. Uh, drinking uh and uh a guy led me off to the side it wasn't quite a trail but it was kind of like a path between two areas uh and i fucked him there it was kind of nice i do have to say one of my my fantasies is uh blindfolded in a blindfolded is a in a sling Mm. so okay yeah I mean, but that's, that's, oh gosh, hold on. That could potentially be doable. You just it's, have to get the sling. And it's the very ball. doable. I've just, for me, I'm like, mm, I'm not down with the whole not knowing thing. Ah. Hey, I didn't say it was your fantasy. <laughs> I didn't say it was mine either. I'm just saying, like, that's the whole thing about fantasies. Like, well, they work for some people, they may not for others. Like, I know someone who told me about a role play, like, rape fantasy thing that they did. And... As the dom, they like spelled out a lot of the details of it. And I was like, there's a part of me that's like, that's all cute. Like, because to me, it's just a story. But then uh, the more I thought about it, I was like, not cute. Like, nope, not for me. <laughs> like, not okay. That being, doesn't, yeah. being kidnapped and taken someplace and treated a certain way. No, not, not bl- my game. Blindfolded, sling, and probably some restraints. Doable. Part of it is. I don't have to do anything. You just so that's the big thing. You just uh-huh. you want to you just want to kind of be. Everybody knows held, here that I am lazy. Held open to the world, yes. quite literally. Mouth can be used, body can be used, orifices other orifices can be used, mm-hmm. anuses can be used, and you just kind of are there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's doable and that's the thing so you know I'll, it, I'll go it may be the... doable i just have no idea uh it did too much planning there is find a plan. i need to find somebody who have a sling who's willing to do it i need at least three or four guys all of you them can have, all of them have, furry bellies uh, you know you can have two guys just going back and forth like as long as the holes are getting used it's not part of my fantasy there has to be more than two <laughs> Oh, okay. Anyway, we, well, anyway, but what I was what I was gonna get there, to, uh, you, we, we finally got to 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 answer Damon's question about what my fantasy is. Thank you. Um. Anyway, so one of the things that often happens, like so, um, as I mentioned before, like kink events, kink contests, leather contests tend to have, um. Um, a fantasy scene as part of the contest and you get graded on it or judged on it essentially. And um, one of the fun things I did recently 
um, was I went to Claw and I went to an actual class that kind of talked about stage fantasies. Um, and one of the good things about it was that, hi, sweetie. Um, <laughs> one of the good things was that um, most of the time, your stage fantasy is essentially a staged fantasy. It can go the extreme depending on how where, how far and what you have in regards to limitations and your rules go. But most of the time, it is whatever fantastical thing you can come up with that you can legitimately stage within the guidelines of this, you know, thing um, of the contest or whatever. Um, like some places will say, you know, no glitter or no fire or no, you know, no, nothing that's liquid so that it doesn't potentially, you know, clean up afterwards and such. Um, keep clean up to a minimum. Basically. Um, so it's it's interesting where that line kind of gets drawn, especially in the kink community, because there are some fantasies that are fantasies, like never could, you know, whatever happened. And then you kind of have, like we were talking about, like things that you can kind of create within the realms. Um, for some, in some good or bad ways, depending on how you go. Uh, I have seen some really awful, awful stage fantasies. Um, where it's confusing and I have no idea who's what's going on and I don't know what the purpose of it is. There are too many elements thrown in. Um, or it's the same thing being repeated over and over again. For example, Jeff's seen a uh, fantasy about being um, bound and in a sling would be hot for... Blindfolded. A, a, blindfolded. It, it would be hot for... Basically, up until you got him in the sling and bound and whatever, and the first person did something to him. To an audience, mind you, or to a judge. After that, unless the next person that comes in does something completely different, you're just getting the same thing over again. The fantasy is kind of flattened because everything that is part of it is there, you know. The sensory deprivation, the bound, you know, and helpless, the inability to know who is doing what, the stranger danger, as it were, um, that's all there with the first person or second person. Mm -hmm. After that, it kind of fizzles unless another element is added. Well, so I think what you're pointing out, Damon, is like staged fantasies, like in terms of like a contest is mm -hmm. what you're describing. The audience, the experience audience is completely flipped. Mm -hmm. So while this may be your fantasy and you're mm -hmm. in it, you're not the intended like like recipient of of what happens. Like that's what I mean by like it's flipped 180. Like mm -hmm. it's not about you fulfilling this fantasy and what you're experiencing unless you can somehow describe it. Like unless you, you know, Madonna like headset microphone it, <laughs> and then talk the whole thing out or oh, like Carl. make your thoughts and, and feelings <laughs> some people are into dirty talk um you know that 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 could be a thing otherwise like everybody else that's watching has to understand the fantasy and then also be taken on a journey with you mm -hmm. yeah. and I think it's what you mean like where it falls apart or goes sideways or doesn't really work and it's messaging because like, if you're the one that's doing it for you and it's your fantasy, that's fine, but you don't need an audience there. Like, if the point of that moment is to, you know, score points and potentially win the contest, the, like, the judges specifically, and then preferably the audience, everyone that's watching needs to go on the journey with you. Mm hmm Exactly. And that's sometimes the worst part, where you have to... to, to um... Like, one of my biggest... Like, I just... Like I said, I recently did a contest, and... Fantasy scenes and what have you have always been tricky for me. And the main reason is because that's for me. That's not for you. Are you or you or the audience or judges or whatever. That's for my, my fantasy is my fantasy. Like Jeff was talking about, mm. his specific fantasy is more than, you know, four or five people and all that stuff and blindfolded. Like, that's for him. And that's where I kind of have often had that, like, I have to realize it's a bit of both in this situation. 
especially in a contest or whatever situation where you're putting something out there and presenting something that is your fantasy, but you are presenting your fantasy for other people to see. Mm -hmm. So like you said, you do have to take them on that journey. You have to tell them that story. Um, We're very, it's very easy to say like, I want to be tied up in a room um, on my knees, blindfolded and taking how many dicks I want, you know, that's easy to kind of do, but to a, to someone watching that after a while, like, oh, well, he's just getting people off. Like, that's nothing great. But for me, that's the, like, oh, my God, I would love to have that happen. Well, I think there's a difference between, like, observing it and experiencing it. Mm-hmm. And there's different ways to experience it. Like, we've talked before about, like, you know, print media and storytelling and, you know, reading about something. Well, in that situation, you're inserting yourself into the experience like well you're not directly having it you're imagining it you're fantasizing this experience that's being played out so there's a a big difference between that and just like remotely observing it like i've enjoyed watching group scenes and there's a part of me that like you know finds that enticing and interesting but also at the same time i can't see myself doing that like you know so and also i'm a big time voyeur so i like watching other individuals that's like a fantasy in and of itself, um, having gone through puberty and feeling repressed and trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of that came about from being repressed and constantly being on guard and being worried about people finding out about what I was interested in and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so I would rather, you know, be a remote observer um there's been plenty of times when i've gone to locations like that have play spaces and i don't interact i just watch and that's perfectly fine by me um you know which that was a whole trope that was a thing for a while i think it was back in the 80s like the secret observer thing like Mm -hmm. that it has i don't want to say it made a comeback but recently maybe in 2017 into 2018 that was like a little theme in some adult media for a little while Mm -hmm. about like yeah, people being hidden or whatever and watching. Yeah, I do. I've seen that. I do, and there's a part of me that kind of gets enjoys that too. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't necessarily call it a fantasy per se, but that's definitely something I I enjoy. Like I like seeing other people enjoying themselves. Right. Hmm. That's Good true. deal. Anything in the chat? Ooh, come on. There we oh. go. Nope, I think we covered everything, I think. Think so? Mm-hmm. Anything else? I guess five folks. Yeah. That's the end. Oh, well. <laughs> Feels like a short show. Anyways, there's plenty of ways to contact us. <laughs> pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email, it comes out loud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 CL. We'll talk that's 361 265 8255. And follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, it comes out in the appropriate place of the URL. Join our Entourage chat where we announce when we're about to go live sometimes. Um, and when we do go live uh, at tel- uh, tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can also subscribe to our Google Calendar on your computer at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, once you're subscribed, on the computer then you can access it from your phone and then other places but you have to do the initial one there uh you can go to our merch store at zazzle.com slash cubs out loud which we may have a new shirt coming soon um and you can also subscribe to us as a patron and get all the pre and post shows <laughs> that you haven't seen at pa- patreon.com slash cubs out loud you can rate us on itunes subscribe to us on google play podcast uh and also on spotify you can find me anywhere in the internet. It's box set box, poppy box, go box, something or other. <laughs> um, I am Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites, so you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gerber73. That's G A R B E A R 73. And with that, uh, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.
<laughs> the heck was that about? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You always do that, I think. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. My big thing, yeah. Maybe it's just my fantasy my is to, to uh, get off while listening to the Cubs Out Loud theme song. I don't know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the things I remember. Like the the thing that most has kind of was getting to me is the whole because ever like I'm, I don't know the whole like family like porns that have been coming on out recently. 